I really enjoy tools that are job specific. And today I'm gonna to share one with you. This is the latest ax I've built, what I'll call the Timber Fallers wedge chopping or wedge pounding ax. Let's put it on the table and I'll, we'll break it down and talk about it a little bit. All right, man, how long's it been since we did a good ax video? Well, I've been so busy, so busy. Speaking of busy, this ax, don't look too closely, this ax is one I put together in an hour and 35 minutes from scratch. And it was in bad shape. I needed a, I needed a, uh, I did, I was surprised. I didn't have a really good follower's ax in the, you know how the Forest Service, many of you guys know, I just finished up the uh, Sawyer qualification cast class with the, uh, as a chainsaw faller with the Forest Service. Um, and they were, they're very specific about tools. You know, they, they, you need to have something and it needs to be fit this particular criteria. And he laid it out. It's like, make sure you bring this ax tomorrow, Cody. It needs to be just like this and it needs to weigh this much. And I thought, oh goodness, I don't think I have one of those. So I got up really early and I put this together, made this handle real quick. Um, but it turned out really good. It turned out really, really good. So what is it? What is a faller's ax? And what, what's the purpose of it? Why is it so short? Well, the primary use for a faller's ax in, in today's world, because we use chainsaws, is to drive wedges, is to drive wedges. So here you see behind me, here I'll show you. This is, uh, this is my faller's belt. This is uh, years of evolution have come down to this. What I have is a pretty good system. Faller typically gonna carry three wedges. You carry one in your back pocket and then two in some sort of wedge pouch. I use the, these aluminum ones here, Grizzly Peak. And of course, something that I carried that, that no one else had in class or, or had really even thought about was I, well, I carry my small forest axe. I love this axe. I don't like to go in the woods without it. I don't care what I'm doing. It is the perfect axe. If you're going to have one, uh, this would be the last one I gave up. I really would. I love, just think the world of it. Uh, for a million different reasons. You don't always want to start your chainsaw and go through all of that. To cut little branches when you can just simply take this out of the sheath really quick, reach behind you. You know, all seem to use it. We don't need to go over that again. Um, but uh, after, uh, after spending uh, five days with the guys in the Forest Service, I think there's going to be more than one of them that are going to be sporting one of these the next time I see them. I could be wrong, but I'm getting, definitely getting that impression. So, for pounding wedges. Pounding wedges when you're falling trees. So you've got a lot of gear to carry when you're a sawyer. You've got your wedges, you've got your faller's belt, you've got all your other line gear, all types of stuff. It's a, you know, it's like, I guess it's probably like the poor guy that's got to carry the M60 machine gun uh, uh, w with the squad and, you know, and, and the military, you know, it's, he's got to carry all his other gear too and he's got to carry that, that big old hunk of metal. So you don't want an ax that's going to, be too big. But this Forest Service has very spe specific regulations. A faller's axe needs to weigh between three and five pounds at the head. That's it, three to five pounds. So this one here comes in at a just a very nice three and a half pounds. This is uh, 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 an axe that was gifted to me. It's still a work in progress. You'll see right there, I've got the scratch marks on it. That's because I was in a real hurry to get that surfaced and I needed to use it. But this is, a, this is a pretty classic Michigan style pattern. I broke out another Michigan here. This is a true Michigan with the, the scallops on there. Isn't that a beauty? That's a really neat one there. I've been saving that. A lot of axes come, come into my life and out and I make them and I give them to different people and different things. I like to make axes and, for folks. And, uh, but this particular one here is, is one that it was really special that I wanted to keep for myself. Uh, it's not a nice little pattern. It's about a two and a, probably two and a half pounder, two pounder, maybe two and a quarter. That's a neat one. But that's, that's not what we're talking about today. But this one here is a, was a, is a really nice, very old forged, hand forged ax. I don't know the manufacturer. There was nothing on there but I could tell just from the eye it inside and, and the quality of the steel when I was sharpening and working on it's top notch. Probably a hundred year old turn of the century to have an ax. So one thing that I did, the back was really mashed up. Someone had used to drive on it, had used it as a wedge and they had, it actually had, when I put a straight edge across here in the back, there was a quarter inch lower at the bottom and the sides were all mashed out, all mushroomed out. It was something that if you had seen it, I think most people seeing it would have just thrown it away. Said, oh, that, that axe has had it. So what I did 
well, what I'm doing, I'll finish to clean this up a little bit, is I resurfaced all of that and I took all that down and I put a really pronounced chamfer on there. You see that? It's all chamfered there on four sides. And then I machined the bottom as flat as I could. I don't, I know I don't have a mill or anything, so that's all, that's all freehand. It's got to be done by hand. But the reason why is these, these wedges right here, these are the actual wedges that I pounded, that I used at the saw class with this particular ax. See how nicely they match up? That's a, that's a match made in heaven right there. But you don't want those sharp edges on there, on that back of that ax, because as you're beating the ax, beating the wedges in, you know, and you're not going to hit it perfect every time. You're going to be at an uncomfortable angle. And if that's sharp, that'll just chew up those wedges. Well, someone might say, well, why don't you use steel wedges? Well, you don't use steel wedges with chainsaw blades. You use plastic. Some people use aluminum. Why do you think that is? Why would you use a plastic? Why would you want to use a plastic wedge with a chainsaw? Well, what happens if you hit the, the wedge with your chainsaw blade? If it's steel, what's going to happen to that blade? Yeah, makes sense now, doesn't it? Okay, now we see got that out of the way. But you can see the reason why the chamfer is now. So if you have a glancing blow, it's less likely to just to chew it up, and it's going to happen. These are a disposable item, you know. But uh, this lessens it right there. And of course, you want it to be flat. You know, where it's going to come in contact. You don't want to just beating on portion of it. You know, this is an important tool. It needs to function. It needs to work because your life could depend on it. And I'm not just being grandiose by saying that or dramatic, but the matter, the fa fact of the matter is, is falling timber is dangerous. And, and the wedging component of it and getting the wedges seated and the wedges right can make the difference between getting hurt or not getting hurt, between getting killed and not getting killed. So having a good solid ax is something that's really essential. A faller's axe doesn't typically need to be super sharp. Of course, this was really pitted when I started with it. And again, remember, I had an hour and a half to work on this. I filed it down as quickly as I could and put up. It's got a decent edge on it. It's just a file, filed edge. But I bet it'll shave. I'm getting pretty good sharpening with the file. I can get them really sharp with those. Three, three and a half pounder, Michigan pattern. And a stubby handle. Really, I really drove that in there. I wanted that wedge, I want that to be really seated. I'm going to pin it with a roll pin because it just it takes such a beating. I want to start pinning my heavy use axes. I'll, I'll, we'll do a video on that. I just I haven't been able to find a roll pin long enough for this one, but that's, uh, that's something we'll cover in another video here really soon. So the handle. How long's the handle? I don't know. I guessed at it. Let's put a tape on it. It just felt right. It felt right to me. So from the bottom, 24 inches. That's just about what I was shooting for. 24 inches. 24 inches gives you a very mobile axe. This is a this is a tank of an axe. It's really sh uh, it's kind of short. It's pretty heavy, stubby, but man, you can really put the sweet on those wedges with it. And it's not so big and long that you couldn't put it in a sheath on a belt if you had to. I just found myself when I was walking, I would just take it and tuck it in my follower's belt. And it didn't hang down and hit the back of my knee or that bone inside my, you know, inside your thigh, inside your knee, like a, like the longer axis will do. So it just seems to be, it's just, it's what has evolved out of that industry. Everyone there and all of the fallers that I see, there's a lot of fallers around here. And one of my favorite things to do is to go to the old retired fallers. There's one that lives not too far from here. My neighbor is a friend of mine. Cut timber his whole life. Cut big old growth timber. And I and I just I, I, I went to look at his old faller belt and everything hanging up there. It was really similar to mine, and he had the same axe. Not the same axe, but this was the design. I mean, mine is the same as his. I'm copying his because that's just what worked. Those guys have boiled it down hundreds and thousands of or hundreds of years, thousands of guys have determined, as far as the Pacific Northwest, that this is this is the business right here. That's what you want. That is a good faller's axe. Very portable, very mobile, but heavy and capable. Not a lot of chopping done with it, but of course you could. It's still an axe, isn't it? You know, if you, if you had to, let's say you, you really uh, fouled up and you got your uh, bar pinched somewhere and you're working out by yourself, you know, you could take that axe and you could chop it out, right? Chop your, chop your saw out and get back to work and nobody would even know about it. And that's the most important thing. Never, never let anyone see two things. Don't let your chainsaw chain come off uh, in front of people and don't get your bar stuck in front of anyone. 
that no self-respecting woodsman can you just can't have that you just can't have it take whatever steps necessary not to allow that to happen hickory good u.s hickory just a piece that uh, i had around here um, but quick and dirty the quick and dirty fallers axe and will i uh will i will i do anything more to it you know what the reality is probably not i'll make a sheath for it a lot of guys really like this one uh, i had uh, uh three guys uh in the class uh a couple of the instructors you know they pick it up and say oh man you know they pick it up they were you know they had they work with the forest service you know so they don't they're not gonna they don't have a lot of axes like this you know they get council tools which are fine axes but they're just not the same you know, they just don't have the that mystique and that feel and that look and and the classic shape a michigan shape it's nice isn't it yeah. anyway they they, they uh, would pick it up and and uh said, boy man that is a nice axe and and then they would i'd hand them i'd hand them this one here you know my grand force brook small forest axe here and they really like that one i thought i thought one of the guys wasn't going to give it back to me but uh man that's a that's as good as it gets right there look at that that's been a that's been a loyal and faithful companion there hasn't it i hate to lose that i really would yeah Give it to one of the guys who was pounding the wedge there and knocked a little chunk out of the handle. That's all right. It'll be new, it'll be due for a new handle here before long, but it's still got got many years left in it. No, no problem there. So that's it. I wanted to share with you my uh, my Michigan pattern, 24 inch Feller's axe, three and a half pounder, and uh, just a, a great great purpose built tool. So hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.